Friends, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is that you are viewing this devotional. My name is Kevin Gregory. I have the privilege of serving as the pastor at Detroit Lakes United Methodist Church. I'm coming to you this day from Kate and I's apartment in front of our own Christmas tree. Uh, like many of you in our area this day, we're working from home because of the, the weather and the, the snow and the condition of the roads and all of that. Um, so this is our apartment. This is all you get to see. <laughs> this week we are in the third week of the season of Advent, and we're in the third week of our series, Back to the Beginning, where we are taking a look at the very beginning of all of the Gospels and seeing what they have to tell us about this Advent and this Christmas season. In the third week of Advent, we looked at the Gospel of John, and we talked a little bit about the idea of joy. Joy, because this is the third week of Advent, we lit the candle of joy. And so I want to read to you from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and verse 14. And so John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And on Sunday, we talked a little bit about how the Gospel of John begins quite a bit differently than Matthew. Mark and Luke. John begins with philosophy. John begins with talking about Jesus as the Word, Jesus as the Logos, Jesus as knowledge and divine wisdom. And Jesus is the Word of God in the Gospel of John. Jesus is the irrefutable Word of God. We talk about Scripture sometimes as being the Word of God, but Jesus is the Word, and Jesus is the prism through which we have knowledge of who God is and the things that God calls us to and asks us to. And we talked a little bit about that idea in verse 5, where John says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not extinguished the light. The darkness has not overcome the light. And we talked a little bit about that parallel with the idea of joy. For many of us, this Advent, this Christmas, it's full of joy. We get to do things like this. We get to decorate trees. We get to have lights in our homes. We get to have decorations and sweets and cookies. We get to spend time with family and relatives. And for some of us, this is also a time in which maybe for the first holiday season or the next in many, we're missing some of those people that we used to decorate our trees with, that we used to bake with, that we used to open presents with, that we used to sing songs with. And that that is okay too. We often think about the idea of light and darkness being antagonistic. That there's a battle between light and darkness and going on. The darkness is always evil and the light is always good. But we also know that sometimes that's not always the case. It's not good for us to simply just stare at the sun for long periods of time, because that would hurt us. And in similar ways, when we look up at the night sky and we see the stars, and the moon, and the blackness of the night, that that is itself a moment of beauty. Sometimes we ourselves try to project too much of the light. We exhaust our light, we allow our lights to run on fumes, and what we really need is the comfort of our beds and the lights turned off and the warmth of the darkness to help us rest. The darkness and the light do not have to be antagonistic. And what we know, especially in the season of Advent and the season of Christmas, as we sing carols and songs like Silent Night and It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, in a little town of Bethlehem, songs that reference the darkness 
the good things that happen there. Psalms like in the bleak midwinter when we talk about the season where the days get shorter and the nights get longer, but that there's still beauty in the midst of that. We know the darkness and the light are maybe not at odds, and that we exist in both, and that Jesus comes into and is present to both, and that there's beauty in both. And so if this Advent, this Christmas, if you find yourself grieving, missing people, if you find yourself not quite in the Christmas spirit yet, know that that is okay. And that the word of God, Jesus, meets you there as well. And if you find yourself joyous, happy, if this is your favorite time of the year, we're so glad. Lean into that and share that with other people. Because joy happens both in the darkness and in the light. There's a quotation, there's a quote from the 20th century theologian, German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer about joy and about Advent. And it comes from his Advent devotionals titled God is in the Manger. And Bonhoeffer writes, with God there is joy, and from him comes down and sees his spirit, soul, and body. And where this joy has seized a person, it reaches out around itself, it pulls others along, it bursts through closed doors. There's a kind of joy that knows nothing at all of the pain, distress, and anxiety of the heart. But that joy cannot last. It can only numb for a time. The joy of God has gone through the poverty of the manger and the distress of the cross. Therefore, it is invincible and irrefutable. And so we're reminded this season that God's joy has seen it all. But the joy of God comes to meet us where we are, in the darkness and in the light. And in all of these ways, beauty and glory and goodness are made manifest. And so may it be so in your life this day.